Oh yeah, come on in. Hello my fellow garden shed naturalists. So we are currently at the end of April 2020 and we're still in lockdown because of the coronavirus. I hope we're all going for our one walk a day to stay healthy. And for today's video I thought I would give you some interesting facts about some plants that you might see on your one walk a day. So if you come with me we'll go and see what we can find. Let's go. This tall hairy plant with blue flowers and pink buds is called green alkanet or pentaglossus empivirans. It's not a native plant to Britain, it was brought here in the 13th century from Spain because its roots can be used to make red dye. A lot of plants have been brought to this country for use in industry. However, green alkanet was mistaken for dyer's alkanet, Alcana tinctoria, and it didn't make a very good dye at all. But now it's here to stay, and that's good news for bees and insects as it flowers early in the year, providing a valuable food source. But it's bad news for gardeners, as its long brittle taproot makes it difficult to pull up. Woohoo! And it usually grows back the next year. <coughs> These plants need no introduction, they're stinging nettles, Urtica dioica. It's one of the few plants almost everybody in the UK can identify because nobody can quite forget those traumatic childhood memories of itchy white welts which can sting for hours or even days. We've all done it, you're innocently walking along, brush a nettle and before you know it you've got a red itchy rash and you're itching like a flea infested sewer rat. But why do nettles have this effect on us? By turning up a leaf we can see that the underside and the stems are covered in these tiny hair like structures called trichomes. These are, in effect, glass needles, as they're rich in silica, which is the main component of glass. Each trichome contains a cocktail of histamines, which make you itch, formic acid, which stings, acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter to make sure it really hurts, and serotonin, which makes sure you can't concentrate on anything else other than the pain. When your skin is brushed against the trichomes, the irritant is injected and the ends snap off and remain in your skin, just to add insult to injury. And it don't half blinking itch! This tree is Hawthorne Crataegus monogyna, believed to be one of the most unlucky plants in Britain. A study on superstitions conducted in 1982 found that almost 25% of Britons thought of the Mayflower, as it's also known, as an unlucky thing to have brought into your house. This isn't a recent superstition either. Hawthorne has got a long history of bad press. Early Christians disapproved of Hawthorne because they believed that it possessed evil spirits as the pagans would worship it, so they burnt it wherever it was found. The pagans would dance around it naked and then dress a May Queen in the flowers before carrying out ritual fornication, which was good for the men, but legend had it wasn't so good for the women, as afterwards they would be sacrificed or burnt alive. serve her right too. Disgusting. However, no evidence has ever been found to support this, and so it likely isn't true. Ironically, it was later believed that the crown of thorns worn by Jesus at the crucifixion was made of hawthorn. However, this is unlikely as hawthorn does not grow in the Middle East. Hey, look, Mara, I brought you some flowers. In medieval times, it was believed that bringing Mayflower inside the house oh, how lovely. would cause your how mother cute. to die. Oh my God, you stupid boy! During the Black Death, people even believed the hawthorn could spread the plague as the flowers would smell like the putrid, rotting corpses that lined the streets. We now know that this is actually true, not that it spread the plague, but that actually hawthorn flowers release a chemical called trimethylamine, which smells like rotting corpses. These tall plants with white little cross-shaped flowers on the top are Aliara petiolata, or garlic mustard, actually a member of the cabbage family. In medieval times, people used to eat them. Which is why British settlers took it with them to North America, after which it quickly spread 
and is nowadays one of the USA's most invasive plants, as it often outcompetes many of America's native species of flora, allowing little else to grow. These red stems, deeply lobed leaves, and great big umbrellas of flowers belong to Anthriscus sylvestris, or the cow parsley. This belongs to a group of plants known as the umbellifers, named after the Latin word for shade, the same as umbrella, because of the umbrella-like flowers known as an umbel. Many of the umbellifers are extremely toxic, like this giant hogweed, Heraclea mantagazianum, which can cause third-degree burns on contact. And this hemlock, Conium maculatum, which was the chosen method of execution by Socrates in 399 BC, when he drank a brew of hemlock tea. Blech. This plant with its pretty pink flowers and round lobed leaves is called Shining Cranesbill. Crane's bills get their names from the shape of their seed pods, which apparently look like crane's bills. Oh, uh, yeah, I suppose it does, really. So there we have it, some interesting facts about some of our common plants. See if you can find some when you're out on your one walk a day. And remember, stay home and stay safe apart from that one walk a day. See you next time. If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to leave it a like or a comment. And if you'd like to see more of my content, feel free to subscribe to my channel, The Garden Shed Naturalist. Okay, see you next time. Stay safe, everybody. Bye.